This is the Celebrity Afterlife Report Podcast. Whatever time it may be, wherever you are in this big blue ball we call Earth, it's time once again for the Celebrity Afterlife Report, the only show on the internet that gives you the up-to-the-minute gossip about all your favorite deceased celebrities. I have contacts all over the next world who keep up with the goings-on of celebs who reside there. They tell me what's up, so I can tell you. Last week I told you about legendary actress Maureen O'Hara's arrival in the afterlife. After a warm welcome by a large crowd, including her co-star in five movies, John Wayne, the festivities were marred when Ms. O'Hara called her old friend by his birth name, Marion. Wayne's smile turned to a scowl, and he immediately dropped Maureen from the bear hug he had her in, causing her to fall to the ground. Wayne then stomped off angrily. Well, we now have more information about exactly what happened there. According to sources, Wayne contacted O'Hara after the unpleasantness and invited her to lunch to apologize to her. One of my contacts happened to be seated in the booth next to theirs in P.T. Barnum's giant tent-shaped restaurant slash arena and tells me that Wayne told the red-headed actress he was terribly sorry for what he did and that his anger didn't really have anything to do with her calling him by his old name. He said he was extremely upset that his latest movie project had completely fallen apart. Months ago, I told you that Wayne had decided to try his hand at being an action movie star and had commissioned a remake of the original Terminator movie, which he planned to star in. At the time, the consensus on the set was that Wayne was completely wrong for the part. Although... He seemed to be oblivious to that fact. Apparently since then, the project has come apart at the seams and the stubborn Duke has finally thrown in the towel. Now, from what I can gather, that's been eating at him and when O'Hara used his civilian name when she saw him for the first time in decades, it triggered his outburst of anger. My source says that O'Hara accepted his apology graciously and that the two ended their meal by splitting a piece of cheesecake. Long-time listeners may remember the story of the feud between world-famous avant-garde painter Jackson Pollock and Apple founder Steve Jobs. After months of secrecy, Jobs finally opened his environment, a blimp hangar-sized building where Next World residents can go to experience a rainy day. Jobs commissioned Pollock to paint a giant-sized mural for the rainforest section of environment, expecting that the finished work would resemble his famous drip paintings. To Steve's surprise and chagrin, however, when the painter finally let him see the work, it turned out to be a very realistic and very large female nude. Deciding that this was unsuitable for the family atmosphere of the eye environment, Jobs banished the mural to a wall of his office building that faces an alleyway. In retaliation, Pollock arranged for dozens of tour buses an hour full of art lovers to drive through the alley. This stalemate has been going on for months now with Jobs, I'm told, frequently raging to his staff about what he sees as an intrusion on his workplace. Now, finally, the Apple CEO has figured out a way to thwart Pollock's sightseers while still adhering to the terms of his agreement with the painter to have the mural on public display on Jobs' controlled property. Jobs has had his engineers install very bright, flashing strobe lights all around the mural. I'm told that this makes it impossible for anyone to look at the mural for more than a fraction of a second or take photos of it. 
Word is that while Pollock is absolutely livid about this turn of events, Jobs is gloating to associates about his literally brilliant plan. Something tells me this will not end well. According to sources on the set, John Belushi is still unaware that the producers of the comedy action movie he's making are deliberately shooting the film so that his 10-year-old Korean son Kim can be cut out of it later. In order to get John to star in the still untitled movie, the producers agreed to his demand that Kim co-star in it with him, only to find out soon after shooting started that the boy has limited command of English and zero acting ability. The boy is being shot in tight close-up so that when he is edited out, it will not affect the storyline. John, however, is under the impression that that's being done to showcase this boy. My sources tell me that although the boy stumbles through his lines shot after shot, his doting dad is right there praising him and his work. From what I hear, the movie's crew vacillates between being mad at the boy for delaying the filming and laughing at poor John behind his back. There's still several weeks of production ahead with some of the most difficult scenes not yet filmed. The crew has started a pool to guess when John will catch on to the producer's roots. Lastly, just before I recorded this episode of The Report, I received word that former Senator Fred Thompson arrived in the afterlife. After he retired from politics, Thompson went on to become an actor, appearing in movies such as The Hunt for Red October and Die Hard 2, as well as working in, uh, as a spokesperson for a reverse mortgage company on television. As is typical for celebs, when Thompson showed up in the next world, there was a crowd on hand to greet him. Now, while some were there to welcome him to his new existence, others were there to jeer him. They were people who were motivated to buy reverse mortgages based on his endorsement of them in the commercials, only to find out that contrary to what Thompson said in the ads, they didn't actually retain ownership of their homes once they signed the papers. An eyewitness tells me that Thompson was taken totally by surprise by the angry people who surrounded him shouting. Fred tried to charm his way out of the hostile situation by explaining that he was just a spokesperson for the company and he only said what he was told to say. That apparently didn't mollify the angry mob and the scene ended with Thompson running away at top speed with several of the men and women chasing him. A uh, bad start to eternity, Senator. Okay, that's it. My work here is done. Please come back next week when I'll have more up to the minute gossip about all your favorite deceased celebrities. Between now and then, please tell your friends that the report is available for free on iTunes. I would appreciate that. I am the Celebrity Medium. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to the Celebrity Afterlife Report podcast. To ask a question about your favorite deceased celebrity, call 818-3-MY-DREAM. 818-3-MY-DREAM. 818-369-369. 3732.